So, what would you say people know you most for? You know, obviously. Right now, I mean, yeah. Right now, it's it's if you follow my music, like yeah. for real, like if, like I am still like working to there. But like the solid, like you know, fifty to a hundred and fifty people that you get that react and are consistent for your shit came around from Drip Drip. Like they came around from that one song. Like I did at least a good job of like getting that out there and like getting it on platforms to be seen. So you know, some people like it, some people don't. But so is that your first visual? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was the first video. That one. Yeah. Didn't fit in all the second? No, no, no. I, I dropped like three in between there. Um, oh, man, if you haven't seen Real, you should see I Real. Seen real. real is really well done. Fitnals. Real is really well done. Um, then I did one to uh, the outro, which was with uh, C. Dukes here in San Antonio. Shout out C. Dukes. And um, then I did uh, the intro up in Fort Worth with uh, three commas, ten digits, uh, David Empey, who's amazing. You guys see real. You guys, if you haven't seen the intro or real, oh yeah, this is, this yeah, is like, this is cinematic. I'm gonna pull it up. Oh yeah. Yes, YouTube, you see that. So on YouTube, I was look, actually looking for a YouTube mm -hmm. thing, like when you drop videos, are they on, on the videographer's page or your personal? Yeah, I do them, um, I do them through the videographer's page. Mm -hmm. I, have somebody that I've known for a long time who I work with through like distribution like it, it's all me like I'm all independent like it's all my own money it's all everything that I push that I have to like keep it going I don't have any assistance and shit like that but um, I do trust him at least as far as like make sure it's done right making sure that my shit's covered when I put my music out making sure if I got something going on it, it comes back to me True. so um, you know, I, I, I go through him, and um, the distributor puts, you know, puts, like, it everywhere. And so there's even, like, a, just one that's just, like, the artwork with, like, the details on YouTube as a video. So it's kind of hard to, you know, really collect all those things from my personal side and then make it work with them when they're, like, just treating me like, all right, we're doing business. Like, this is business. We're putting it everywhere, and we're getting the money. Yeah. And what you collect off of streams from something like YouTube is just so small that like it's almost, you know, it's it's more of a, it's better to like have a handshake and high five and trade that off with the videographer than just be like, you know, establish a good connection, start doing tons of videos with them, like, you know, get their page going up and, you know, you're not going to make a whole lot off of streaming on your own if they've got like eight or nine people going hard yeah. like people like half pint films like you know who have like that whole dallas fort worth area you i mean there's there's other ones like i can't think of it but like you know for people that dominate their respective cities like large cities like miami like when hype williams was doing that back in the day everybody had the fucking hype williams video with the the bar on top and the bar on bottom doing different things and the white screen in the middle That's right. yeah but when you when you do that you know that'll add up you know, thank you simone saves me a couple hundred bucks here and there like you know it works for me too you know? yeah, to buy some new equipment yeah i'm not well i'm not gonna make that i'm not gonna make that off youtube you know, if you're gonna get your streams, you gotta have people having you know, your back on like Apple Music, Tidal, like Spotify's tough because I know people that use Spotify primarily out of just like, you know, that's their access to that niche of music, like local artists, like that's their easiest way to find them. But I don't know anyone who likes the way it randomly applies. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, why does it never play this? You're like, yeah, you're like, bro, I like your shit. I followed all your shit. I downloaded it and I haven't heard it once. I yeah. don't know why. So, man, I'm one of those 20 followers. Like, I think I'm at 20 right now. Yeah. I, I was. Spotify is one of the hardest you should. Yeah. I've seen that come and go. Like, uh, I was up at one point in time to like 180 or something like that, like when I was like really pushing Drip Drip hard, and I'm down to probably like on Spotify, dude, like probably like 10, 12, you know, yeah, I'm not super big on Spotify. It's hard to push, it's not as, you know, it's not as pretty. Pushing yourself yeah. on Apple Music is a lot, you know, it gives you a better, it's, it gives you more of an aesthetic. Mm -hmm. It's that and SoundCloud. 
is definitely the easy because it's you know it's free. Mm -hmm. Everyone's familiar with it. Yeah. Um, and it's just easy. Like you can access it even without the app. Mm -hmm. So it's just I feel like that's what what does well for me. Yeah. Know. Now that they've totally monetized it as well, but you know, SoundCloud's just as good as anything. You don't pay to get your money. Not if you go through like the, you know, not if you go through like a distributor. We have, we have all that set up. It's just another, you know, one of like, I've never done DistroKid, but I imagine with DistroKid you would just like select, you know, all the outlets that yeah. you, you wanted to go to. It just like that, you know, at that point in time you don't pay again. I mean, in a sense you pay, maybe, but. So let me ask you this, because I know for a fact not a lot of artists that I know personally, or even here in San Antonio, they don't have a distribu distributor versus using TuneCore or DigitalKid mm -hmm. or whatever source. So like, what is it like to kind of do all that in the independent realm? Um, it, it makes no fucking difference if mm -hmm. you don't have people going after your music for stuff. So just having somebody that covers it for you makes no fucking difference if nobody's going to listen to it. But if you have you know, at least a decent enough or stable enough to see something come back in returns. Like, you have to make a certain amount of money to get paid back. They're not just going to send you 25 cents at a time. Yeah. But, you know, if you're at least making that or you're getting checks coming back to you, you know, a couple hundred dollars here and there, 70, 80 bucks, 90 bucks, something like that. Um, it's just, it's a peace of mind. It's easy. Like, you upload your music, you go through the same process that you go through with TuneCore and everything. It's just you've got somebody screening you. You've got somebody who's got your back. You've got somebody who's like, all right, cool, we can do this. All right, no, we can't do that. And, like, as an artist, like, if you know all the, everybody that makes your music, it's great. And then you can work with that and trust everybody that you want to trust and go from there. But if you're out here trying to get beats, trying to find things, trying to do things your style that like fit you and you're like buying beats and paying for beats, like you know, the last thing you wanna do is work so fucking hard and put all this money into something and then go out and put try to put it out and find out that you can't. Yeah. You know, that like it's not covered or something like that. Like there's a sample in it. Or imagine imagine putting it out and it's out for like a day or two and you share all the links and everything, and it just gets fucking ripped out and it's gone everywhere. Like, you know. Like, it, it's not only tough to rebuild, actually logistically tough to fucking re go record another song, go do another video, have a different concept, have a budget enough to get everything out and around. It's just mentally defeating. Like, I mean, you know, it, it, it fucking sucks. You know, you put everything together and then like something else comes and takes it away. And you don't have to worry about that if you have a good distributor. That's good to know. If you go through TuneCore and all those other things, if somebody comes a knock in there, they don't necessarily have your back first. Yeah. Because it is going to be CYA. You know? well, yeah. That makes sense. That's good. And that really set you apart from the people that are just out here. I don't, I don't even know what to call it, but you know that you're serious about what you want to do. Yeah, and it's not tough. You just got to look. You got to go and try to get your music out there. You got to just present yourself well. That's it. Just know every time you're going to present yourself well. Like, it, it, there's a time and a place for everything. Like, you can send links and just DM links and things like that. But, like, you know, they got a little email there that says, like, contact by email. Like, you know, put something together. You yeah. know, like, copy paste <clears throat> your graphic, put it in there, embed the link. To like your song, like it's if you got it, if you got it other, if you got it in more than one place, embed other links underneath there. Just put a little detail of like this person, this person from here, called this, and it goes a lot further than just fucking sending, you know, like a a YouTube video. And I mean that's that's not every outlet, but like if you're trying to get somebody who's gonna take you seriously. Like most of those people, like they're not rappers, they're not, you know, they're not anywhere worried about how they're perceived, like they're not about an image, like they don't give a shit if you have a world star video or not, they just want to see that like you're going to be, you know, up and out and putting music and professional and you're not going to just fucking fall off after one song, yeah. so, yeah. And that's a good note 
on everyday life. Yeah. Make sure you're professional when you're presenting something and you know, it, it does matter in first impressions because first impression of somebody who can really help you out and they didn't like your attitude. Oh yeah. You know, there it goes out the door out too, you know. Yeah. But uh, professionalism is really key. And being an entrepreneur as well as an artist, like you can't just be an artist and not want to learn about the business side of things. Yeah, it's tough. Sometimes I feel like um you know, that like you get caught up in that. Like you want it like if you have like there's a certain sense of like arrogance you kind of have to have to be like I want to put myself in front of everything like listen to me and what I have to say because it's important there's like a certain sense of pride that you have to have so you know not everybody wants to be a rapper like that not everybody wants to put it forward you just kind of have to be able to put all those things together and and go up there and, and just like sell yourself and when you're selling yourself you you want to do it as good as you rap and then you start to you know get focused on that and you start being things that you're not necessarily like I didn't come in here to be like you know somebody who's shaking everybody's hand and fucking going here to do this and That's going here to do that and yeah you get caught up in it and it drags you down and you don't want to do it and then you know, I guess this is where people who are like bigger, who have more money, get other people to do that shit for them. Yeah. But, you know, until you get there, like, you gotta do it. You're right. You gotta be able to do both. But it is tough. Yeah. I would say that, you know, I would envy somebody who doesn't have to do that. Who just all you have to do is create. You don't have to worry about anything else. Yeah. And they come flocking. I, mean, I think that's like what Uzi was trying to get to. Yeah. I think they were trying to make him work, and he's just like, no. Just take my Uzi dust. <laughs> It'll work. Yeah, I promise. It'll come on the bell right there. McDonald's starts selling breakfast, Uzi drop me music. Like, hey, it happened. <laughs> the big rib is bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once a year. Like Santa Claus. Every time they bring it back, I don't think I ever try. I don't ever ever try to do it. Yeah, I don't eat. Um, it's just kind of freaky. Like. I don't eat like beef or no? pork or chicken. No, I mean I guess it would be pescatarian. I try to be more vegetarian than pescatarian, but like I do still have you know like fucking cravings. Like you know some things you can replace and they're pretty good. Like chicken is totally replaceable. Yeah. All these like fake chicken things. I, mean, I like fish more than chicken. Yeah. 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 But that's that's the one like you know like good fish like shrimp and crab and stuff. I'm just like ah oh, yeah that you can't. You can't fake. Yeah. So. If you do this, not Yeah. And I mean, as far as like the reason why I don't do it, like I am one of those people who like kind of has a moral obligation to it. Not necessarily the way that we treat animals or anything like that, but just the whole process that comes into like raising these things for the purpose of food and then like how, like you've probably seen tons of like Netflix documentaries about like just like there's a certain percentage of fecal matter and all of like our pork and everything like that. So like that just rubs me the wrong way, but there's something innately human about fishing. Like there's something, you know, very primally human because people can say like, oh, we're, we're people, we're meant to eat meat. Like we don't necessarily have the teeth to eat meat. And even if we did eat meat, what we ate as far as meat was not select bits and pieces of a cow's butt that we've scientifically cut all the other fat. In. They were not out there like fucking skilled butchers. Like yeah. come they get just, it. No. They saw you yeah. Kill it, burned right. It, it. Yeah. So I mean, like, there's something innately human about fishing. Like everybody fish. Like around the world, all the religions, all the ancient civilizations fished. I can't think of one that didn't fish. Like. We're talking all the way to like China, Japan, Egypt, Vikings. I mean, I guess, uh, no, they had boats. I was gonna say, you don't really hear a lot about the Romans fishing, but no, they had boats, they had fishing. There's the whole like Jonah and the whale story in the Bible. Oh, no, Jesus is a whole, there are a whole fishermen around, a whole gang of fishermen. There's a lot of fishing going on. Yeah. I just realized the world is like, the world is like 50% fishing. Yeah. And you know what I always <laughs> think about, like, the ocean is uh, just vast, right? Just yeah. imagine this, how deep the ocean really goes, like, oh, what's yeah. really out there. Like, there's no way we Do you can see everything yeah. in the ocean. Like, it's, it's, it's so, I mean, great. I guess geologists, and um, I think we've been able to go at least certain depths, or 
they they do it no they measure it through sonar i think like i think you send they send sonar signals down and they can like tell like um the density of like mass as it goes down yeah so i think we understand at least how far a certain amount of the earth is into because so there has to be a core right there there is a core like mm -hmm. you know i'm not on some like earth's flat shit but there has to be a core so if there's a core and then everything that surrounds it this is impossible but how trippy would it be if the core was like a water core and like it was just like a really pressurized gravitized you know point you almost sort of like this like I don't know, like this is gonna get crazy now. Almost like this sort of like black hole type of thing but like yeah, underwater yes. because it's just like, like it's just a point in water where everything like the magnetic zero essentially. Um, and that'd be crazy if that was actually underneath if you could go from one ocean to another. Because the ocean gets denser and denser. I mean yeah, like, you wouldn't you be able to share, but you just kind of yeah. disappear. <laughs> I don't know. That's into some, the that's abyss. Some high talk. Yeah, right. <laughs> Or I didn't spend that much time in school. <laughs> so, what I what I did want to ask is like, yeah, when you're doing your videos, mm -hmm. are you directing as well? Like, do you get involved, or is it strictly like your videographer's vision? I'm growing into that. I'm growing into that. At first, it was kind of like I'm just gonna do some things. I'm gonna stand around, and like this is your turf. Like, just record me doing this shit. You know, and and we'll go from there. Like I don't like I try not to do the stereotypical. Like you know, I'm somebody who's just very active with a lot of things, but I'm not gonna like wave at your face. You know, like if you listen in, you'll find out. If you if you don't, then like whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, at first, I was just kind of like doing my thing. Then I kind of saw the way I was appearing on camera, and I was like, I gotta improve this. I gotta get better at this. I gotta take this to the next level. So then I started becoming more in tune with like the direction that I'm getting. And um, like I just started kind of getting a little bit more comfortable with myself. I haven't fully taken it on to like a cinematic standpoint yet where it's like full on storytelling. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's, it's in game. You know, yeah. I mean, not necessarily in game, but that's the goal. That's what yeah. we're gonna get to. Where everything has like props and better budget, better design you know, like tuned in and so you just gotta do something unique. Mm -hmm. And I'm not gonna go do anything fucking stupid, so I gotta at least try to be creative. That's always I always want like to ask that because when I'm reaching out to an audit artist and someone just hits me up like, hey let's shoot a video, I was like, hey cool, like send me the track list or mm -hmm. like what do you have in mind or you know, what's your idea behind this? And when I ask like do you have a budget, I'm not asking how much money do you have to give me if right. I wanna put this in production so we can really like make this happen and like do something with it. Like, yeah, like, I, think a, I think a lot of people, that's like, that's a good thing. Like that's, I mean, that's something that I would like to like talk about and I wonder just how your perspective is from it. I think a lot of people take and use that question differently in different terms. So like it really just, it depends. I would say like um, most people that you meet and like as you casually start to talk to them then it comes up and you, you know, you're kind of like already at that point where you're like, okay, like, you know, we're working together. Like, no, these are just like simple goods and services. Like, yeah. you know? And even if not that, just like, you know, what are you trying to do? Where are you trying to take this? But from a lot of people up front, it can be considered just like incredibly abrasive. Uh, and yeah. like, you know, some people are like, you ask me about my budget. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Like, of course I have a budget. You know, of course, some people maybe not. But, you know, um, some people maybe it's like, I got to figure out how good of an idea I can put this video and song together before I decide how much I'm gonna spend on this thing. But and even even if then you're like, I don't know what budget I have, and I was like, cool, then like let's write at least write up a script. So right. If there isn't a lot of budget, we know where we you know we can just do. You just want to see a plan. Yeah. Exactly. You just want to see a plan, and it, and I think if you're coming across people that are giving you a plan, then they're not gonna be naive enough to not, you know, include a budget in that plan. I think some people want to keep that close to them sometimes, but you know. It's a personal question when you talk about money. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Especially the higher up you get there. Yeah. Like I imagine that's got to be tough. Like r rappers, you got to pay your way for a lot of things. You got to kind of like pay to put yourself in the game on a lot of platforms. But at the same time, like 
you're never really gonna get paid. You're never really gonna have to pay to get your feet stepped on. You know what I'm saying? Like as a videographer, like imagine like you make video, you put out all these things like that, and at the end of the day, all the artist really wants to do is put it on World Star. Yeah. You know, not even on your page. Like yeah. that's not really what's going on. So like, you know, even at your peak, you know, like you're getting your feet stepped on, you're getting that World Star logo slapped all over your work. Like at the end of the day, man, nobody else is going out there and is just spitting over my bars. Like you know, just saying the exact same shit. You know, at the end of the day, you got that. You know. Yeah, I just don't know how I feel about it. Not, not that response, but money in general and planning. And, and, it, and, it, and it's the worst part when I like really want to work with the artist. Mm -hmm. Like, man, I, like I want to do this, but like, where's your plan? Okay, here's the plan. And then it comes out to scheduling. It never happens. So, like, it's just, I um, think. Um I think part of what got this going at the beginning and like made it like good and I've, I've like I've had a gap I haven't put out a video since February or like in or like in May but I went like a solid like June to February and I've got like five videos and I, I don't know if you knew this but I made a track with Killer Kalyan and Glasses Malone in oh, between yeah, that time I yeah I got a song with Killer Kalyan and Glasses Malone very like old school hip hop -y vibe pretty fucking dope yeah check it out check it out um, yeah, but um, I went pretty hard during that time, and you just like you gotta be you gotta be able to execute. You gotta set your sights reasonably, and you gotta be able to execute. And like you know, everybody has these grandiose ideas, and like those probably are gonna be hits. Those probably would be awesome. But the thing that separates you from you know some of those other people is that ability to execute. And if you can't fucking execute it, like you know, do what you can do, do what you can do, and then get better at that. And growing like that's like the videos like you know tend to get better and better like you start to become more comfortable with yourself you start to understand your camera presence you know like I, I feel like um, and it has nothing to do with the subject it has nothing to do with the context but I get impatient just with life in general sometimes and like I've had to learn to not wear that like sigh of impatience on my face I'll be like watching shit nobody will see it but there'll be a solid four seconds so I'm just like like my whole demeanor and posture changes, and I'm just like, all right, now we're back, you know, and like, it, I'm not gonna be like this right yeah, now. Yeah, and so like you can see, like you know, that might not be something that the cameraman sees, but they're working on. But like you'll be watching the videos with yourself, and you'll see it in your eyes, and you'll be like, ah, oh, that's fucking off right here. Like I was just like going through the motions, and you know, maybe not everybody has that problem. Maybe everybody, like other people are like a fucking star. Like I'm ready for the cameras, you know, but. Um, I just want to be better than every every time I gotta do it. I gotta do it better. Every time I see somebody's video, like even if I fuck with it, I still I'm like, damn, I gotta do something better than that. That's a good, that's a good mindset to have, because especially when you have that like when I watch movies, I always watch them like I can do that, like I can do this shot, and I feel like. Yeah, I'll be sitting there and I'll be talking talking about storylines and be like, it would have been better if they'd done this. And then, I, oh, I see movies too, and I'm just such like a like a pessimist in movies. Not a pessimist, but like I like like you know like let the let the scene where like does the kid die or not? I'll be sitting there in the middle of suspense, be like, it'd be a good movie if the kid dies. Like yeah, you don't want the kid to die, but you want the movie to come at you like raw, yeah. and then be like, yeah, there you go, see. It was a good movie. The Some kid died. Raw movies are intense. Huh? Yeah, in the raw in the raw movies, the kid dies. <laughs> what was this one I was? Watching? It's the PG thirteen barrier. Uh, I think it was called Underground. It was on Netflix, and it was just one of those days. I'm like, I'm gonna try this movie out. <coughs> Dude, it was it was like these orphans, and like it showed these orphans. What do you say is like your biggest struggle? I wouldn't even just say with music either. Like, what's your music? Oh, just life in general. Yeah. Ooh. It's balance. Balance. It's balance. It's keeping it, keeping it steady. Maybe it's a judgment call. You know, maybe that's just like sometimes you think you got to push really, really hard, and then sometimes it's just, uh, it, you know, it's just uh, easier to back off to like you know like and I mean part of it is being proud of like what you've done and being like look at this shit that I made and you want to celebrate it and you don't want to immediately move on to the next but then you know like 
you 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 have to you have to understand the barrier between like making music for yourself and like making music for other people to listen to and like while you're trying to do the same at the time always like if you're not acknowledging that there's a difference between the way you hear it when you're making it like everything down to the words that you use that you identify with use in that language that context that you speak versus how somebody else hears it like those are two completely different things and if you're not even acknowledging that barrier you're going to drift so far into making music like just for yourself that somebody's going to hear it and they're not going to know what the fuck you're talking about or not even going to get any of your references mm -hmm. they're not you know even going to get anything that you're, you're trying to say and so you you, you try <laughs> to do them both and i think for me that just comes through work mm -hmm. and you know preparation and like it, that goes the same way with promoting, like making the music, like, you know, we talked, they're like two different monsters, but like, it's the same type of keys to success, like, and for me, it's easier to stay balanced and consistently make good music than it is to like be on top of my game about like, promoting this, trusting the right person that it's going to get to, like, there's so much bullshit nowadays, like, you gotta make sure you're like, you're being seen, and like, I don't, maybe the whole it's gonna happen soon. Like numbers aren't gonna mean shit soon because it's yeah. gonna be. Are you really being seen, or you just got numbers? Because yeah. like. Because you can buy numbers. Yeah, you can buy numbers so easily, so yeah. easily for yeah. like so inexpensive. I've actually thought it'd be a pretty fucking hilarious idea. I'm surprised nobody's come up with this yet. And I'm, I'm if I have a lawyer, follow this now, okay? Mm -hmm. This follow me here so nobody steals this. But so all this brushing game, brushing the numbers, brushing the likes and comments, right? Mm -hmm. Why hasn't nobody come up with like a hate game, like a, a thumbs down? Game. Like imagine, cause oh, like imagine true. getting like a thousand dislikes on uh, YouTube. So imagine so, so, getting like a hundred comments being like, "This shit's trash," because they're just bots that are like fire, bro, blah blah. blah. And, then and you can wants to so so you just feed on the salty people, and you're just like, uh, local rapper, you're tired of hearing. Nobody knows who this is when he's on the track. <laughs> <laughs> Want to put his new single out? Nobody knows, but 20 million people dislike this. <laughs> yes. Could you imagine? I mean, like, it's such an insecure process. Could you imagine putting out, like, a music video and, like, seeing it organically grow, like, naturally, like, what you expect? And so, like, mm -hmm. you put it out, and, like, within you know, maybe 20, 30 minutes, you got, like, a couple hundred views. And you're like, all right. You know, like, yeah, you're watching it. Mm -hmm. You're watching those likes come in, watching those comments, looking for, you know, that real shit. And all of a sudden, you just start getting <laughs> dislike after dislike after that's, dislike after like what negative. What you need to do with that is make a short film. Like that's that's a great short film. Like I can see the depression on. This just thing. just start like an underground service to troll local rappers. Just be like, want your son to give up rapping? We'll bully him out of it. That'd be a total. That'd be a total. Um, did you ever see Be Kind Rewind? Yes. That could be a Jack Black most deaf combo movie, right. like where they were like the people who were like trolling. You know, like most deaf would feel all guilty about it, and Jack Black would be like, "Y'all are trash. I'm a better rapper than you." <laughs> Jack Black is a rapper. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that that's a weird combo. I think I like it though. Yeah. Kind of Jack Black is funny. Yeah. Um, you kind of mentioned promotion briefly yeah but like me i kind of do that for myself yeah and i mean like you said you're independent so you're doing this yourself as well like what are i guess some of your best practices capture who you know like i mean if you want to reach new people you're gonna have to get yourself on platforms that have a new audience so finding those platforms is key and finding platforms that you can uh, you know, utilize, maximize your opportunity with. Like, I mean, um, it's no secret, you know, say cheese is a simple, you know, pay to post type thing for most people, but you do it right, you can get, you know, a good amount of exposure. You can get a couple hundred people start following you and like people actually engaged in your music, yeah. you know? So, just, um, like maximizing utilizing those opportunities when you come across new platforms that's how you're going to find new people so if you're not finding new people and you're trying to grow yourself you got to make sure that you know what you can control you can control like the people you know should know you like should know that you make music yeah. they should um you know either either hopefully you make music that they like if you don't that might be a sign 
but <laughs> you know, make music that they like or just like represent something that they like and they respect. So that way you have like 50 people that, you know, bring you up, you know, like you have people that don't even listen to rap music, especially coming from San Antonio, yeah. but that like, you know, might listen to a song of yours. They might like it. They might not really hear it or understand it as much, but if they're given it in the right context where like, let's say they meet you, you know, like the energy that you have, they hear the music, it's good enough for them. The total package that they fucking buy into, like now anytime they go and meet like somebody like, oh yeah, we're gonna go this rapper. Oh, I got a friend who's a rapper. Like, have you ever heard of so and so? Like, yeah. you know, as long as you, if you got people, the people that know you respect what you're doing, that's a good sign that you're probably doing it right. And I mean, in the grand scheme of things, like if you can at least be at peace with who you are and yourself, and be proud of what you're doing then like you're pretty far ahead in this yeah. Yeah. i think at the end of the day while we all want to be heard and stuff like that like if you can make something you can honestly look at it and you don't say like oh that should have been better oh that should have been this then like it's a very rewarding feeling yeah like and i feel like the people you know are your best audience because you know they're, they're the ones that's really excited that you know you that you, they know you and the yeah. fact that you're making something that they enjoy or, you know, they're just excited to support you. But you'll, just, you'll need that. I mean, you'll need it in, in small doses. I mean, yeah. you know, it's not going to carry you. you got to be able to break through, yeah. which is, you know, that's where I'm at. You know, i gotta, I got to find a way to break through. But um, it's, it at least, you know, it at least makes you feel good about it. Like, you know, you when you... When you have people that like repeat your songs to you or like, you know, know the lyrics to your songs, like, or it comes out constantly, like, there's sort of like, for me at least, there's like sort of a bashfulness that you're just like, oh, oh like, you know, like, damn, let me that song like a year, they put that out like a year ago, and like, y'all are still like on that, like, you know, that's, that's genuine. It's not just like, like, that's what they know you as, like, and isn't this what you want, you know, like, you don't want people to know, like, Oh, this is so and so, and he raps. Oh, you know, man. like you are a rapper. You are who you represent. You know what you represent. It's yeah. difficult. It's difficult to practice. I mean, you, you know, you'll sacrifice something with every everything. You know, you'll do a video and you're like, damn, I could have done that better. But you gotta put it out and move on. So. I want to ask you one more question here. Yeah. I was asking earlier. So what can people look forward to? What's coming next for you? It'll be an album. Basically, how it gets packaged, I'm not too sure. Probably your typical, like, there'll be a video or a single that headlines it. Um, just working on getting the legalities figured out with that one, but I have the song pretty much set up. Um, got to get that all good to go and then I can shoot a video for it and it'll probably anchor an album and you know give uh, all I've really put out are like singles so it'll give some you know Is give everybody oh uh, yeah yeah I'll give first I, album. I don't really notice it they have in singles and the visuals so yeah like yeah to. yeah give somebody a full thing to take home with you I'm not sure if the full idea is out yet but like what is it about. Oh, it'll be all over the place. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, you'll see some shit that's, um, you know, like you'll see, you'll see some aggression, you'll see some passion, you'll see some times where I just am trying to be clever. Like, um, you'll see a lot of different emotion styles. Like, it really is kind of getting back into that grind and just having like something to really set down and be like, hey, this is it. Like, you'll find something in here, and like, if you don't. I'm, yeah, it is what it is. But, you yeah. know. That's what's up. Um, but, yeah, that's all that. Shit, we got a lot of still high. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was great talking with you, man. It's it's cool that you kind of opened up and talked about a lot of different things. Not a lot of people did that so yeah. far with Tapped In. So that's cool. That's what's up. That's, that started to end the struggle in between for the end of season one. Too, I want to do something different with season two. Like yes. just slightly different, not like insanely different. You know, still the same template, but the the type of 
I guess the quality of like the conversation I want to be different. Okay. But I, I, I like because you brought stuff that was in your heart and you talked about like the business side because not a lot of people even focus on that. It's yeah. Good, like you just put music out and it be that. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I said it must be nice. Yeah. yeah. It would be nice. Well, I mean. I mean, for some yeah, for some people that's that's how it works, you know, but not like uh, you know, it's it's tough. Like, you do have some advantage, you have some disadvantages. Normally, when you're older, like you're a little bit more financially stable. You're also a little bit smarter, you know, do yeah. dumb shit. You don't get too emotional with what happens, you know, in it. Was next. Yeah, but when you're younger, man, you got that easy access to an audience. Like, you know, you got people just trying to see what's up just because they're trying to see what's up you know like when you're in school still you got everybody like around you all day like I yeah wish I was right <laughs> right but even like even most people when they are they don't have like the wherewithal or like the resources to do it right yeah. and you know, that's I guess like you know sans life there's the trade you know inexperience versus you know youth 